South Pole. Man has always been trying to outdo himself, driven by curiosity or competitiveness to be the first to reach a place where no one else has ever been. <laughs> And one of the most amazing of these adventures was the conquest of the South Pole. <sighs> the worst has happened. The Norwegians have forestalled us and are first at the Pole, 16th of January, 1912. But let's go back to the beginning of the story. One year earlier, the British explorer, Captain Robert Scott, had a plan to be the first to reach the South Pole. He set sail on board an old Scottish whaling ship, the Terra Nova, with a large crew. He had 17 ponies, 30 husky dogs, and three motorized sleds. Meanwhile, the Norwegian explorer, Roald Adamson, was planning to go to the North Pole. But secretly, he changed his plans to go to the South Pole instead. He knew he was competing against Scott and sent him a telegram. Beg leave to inform you, am proceeding Antarctic. Amundsen. In October 1911, both teams set off for the South Pole. Amundsen only used dogs in his expedition, 116 huskies which could cope better with the cold conditions. <laughs> Scott's team had problems. The pony sank in the snow and couldn't make any progress. <sighs> The race to the pole was an obstacle course. There were cracks in the ice, avalanches, snowstorms, and temperatures plummeted to 40 degrees below zero. After two long months, Amundsen exclaimed, I have the South Pole in sight. I can hear the axle of the earth creaking. At three o'clock in the afternoon, on the 14th of December, 1911, the Norwegians reached 90 degrees latitude, the South Pole itself. Amundsen always dreamed of reaching the North Pole. As it was, he was the first to reach the South Pole instead. One month later, the British arrived at the South Pole. They had been beaten. Hmm? <sighs> Their return back to base was a terrible journey. The dogs were exhausted and Scott's men were collapsing from fatigue and the incredible cold. Downhearted and weary, they took the wrong route back and were trapped in the ice forever. Had we lived, I should have had a tale to tell of the hardihood, endurance, and courage of my companions, which would have stirred the heart of every Englishman. These rough notes and our dead bodies must tell the tale. Scott and Amundsen's adventures represent man's struggle against the elements through willpower and teamwork.